Hey guys, Sam here. Welcome back to Sam Craft and welcome to the next build video of me building my workshop. My 20 foot wide, 32 foot long stick frame behemoth of a building that will house in the future my laser engraving and woodworking business. In today's video, I'm going to work on house wrapping and then installing my wooden siding on the building. So let's go ahead and jump over to the outside and start working. I have a nine foot roll of woven house wrap. It's a water resistive barrier. I'm going to try and put this up there by myself. This is a nine foot by 150 foot roll. It's got a little bit of mass to it, but my biggest concern about doing this by myself is pulling it out, stapling it, keeping it tight, keeping it straight, and just keeping it looking pretty nice. I don't want it to look like I just stapled a grocery bag on my building, so we'll see how far I go. If it ends up being a mess, falling apart, I will stop and I'll wait for help. But for right now, we'll give it a shot. I finished installing the house wrap on this long wall. What I want to do now is go ahead and start putting my siding on here so that any strong winds don't come by and just tear it off. In preparation of this step, I measured the other day the point where I want the bottom of my siding to be, put a couple of pencil marks on my floor joist, and I just finished installing a two x four right there, flush with the top of that pencil line, which will act as a ledger or a holder of place so I can put the panel up on the wall sit it on top of the two x four. I know my bottom reveal is exactly where I want it and then focus on getting it aligned and making the wall straight with my first piece and keeping everything in line with the studs. So I want to say that it's going pretty easy, but it's not really. <laughs> it's uh, being pretty difficult to get things lined up. And the board on the bottom, I go back and forth from it's helping to it's actually hurting. So I don't know. I'm still getting the hang of it. Um, I'm trying to be very, very picky. Make sure these things are dead right where they need to be. The gaps are good between the two panels. I'm not drifting. So I'm being very picky. So it doesn't make it an easy, fast thing. That's for sure. Either way, it is at least going, so that's good. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it is what it is. Well, about an hour or two worth of work and this whole wall is done. The siding is installed, the house wrap is not going anywhere, which is great, and it, even better than everything, looks awesome. Towards the end there, I kind of got into my groove. I abandoned using the 10 foot long two x four. I think it was bowed a little bit and it really was fighting me down here on the first couple of panels. Instead, what I ended up using was a scrap two x three, maybe about six or seven inches long. I attached it at the panel edge 
let it overlap about three inches left, three inches right for that new one. Set the new one on there, pinned it in place with a screw in the wall stud if I needed to, and then light everything up and just went to town. I had planned on using my Pazload nailer with two inch long grain chain galvanized nails for the siding, but this has been so touchy, or at least I'm being so picky on installation, and I had to tweak those first couple a few times that I'm just using screws now. It is more expensive. I'm definitely using ones that are not really made for the siding. These are three inch long ones that I had on hand. It's overkill, but it is allowing me to be more careful, cautious, and hopefully not mess up or make mistakes. And in the end, that's fine. That is what really matters. All right, guys, day number two of working on house wrap and siding. I finished the long wall yesterday, at least as far as I will go. There's one more piece to put on, but it will block off my doorway and cause me to take off the ramp. And I'm just gonna skip it for now. I can put it back on, it's the last one, it's no big deal. I'm gonna leave it so I can continue on working and not mess up stuff. Today I'm gonna be working on the short wall. This is one that is right next to my current workshop. I have two 45 degree two x four braces, the ones that I put up whenever we raise the walls. I'm gonna remove them from the outside, put them on the inside to maintain that structural rigidity. Then we'll do a house wrap, staple it up, and put the siding on this part. Twenty-one minutes later and this whole side has been house wrapped and it is now ready to have the siding put on top of it. Awesome. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm using a different style stapler today. I went to the store last night and I found this just walking around the aisle. I was actually looking at insulation, kind of getting some sticker shock, but I found this on the same aisle and I was like, huh, this would probably be a whole lot faster. And it absolutely is. This is a hammer style stapler and it hands down makes this job so much quicker. The short wall here is done, so now we're moving around to the front side of the workshop out here in Sonsville. I'm going to start off with the same process, house wrap the full length of the wall, and then I've already brought over my siding with a tractor, starting to put the siding up, and we'll just continue to wrap this down with one difference with the siding, but I'll explain that once I'm done with the house wrap. Exactly 29 minutes later, and this whole side of the shop has been house wrapped. That was a little bit trickier because this is a lot taller on this side than the other sides that I've done. And all of a sudden, as luck will have it every single time, the winds have started to kick up. <laughs> right as soon as I got it all the way across on that last bit of the first run where I had only stapled the bottom, it was like, <laughs> there goes the house wrap. So I've got it buttoned down incredibly well. I think I went through, I don't know, six million staples and it is there to stay but let's go ahead and get some siding put up in place and make sure it really does stay.
So if you guys picked up on what I'm doing differently, you probably have at this point. So let's go ahead and bring you guys over. I will give you a more detailed show and tell and explain why I'm doing this side different. All right, guys. So what I'm doing differently on this side, instead of going from left to right, I'm installing these siding panels right to left. The reason I'm doing that is all a matter of perspective, meaning the perspective and visual you get as you drive in our property and look at our workshop from the most common angle. I'm going to overlay some footage of where the siding goes over top of the window opening and in that instance in that area is a great example to show you how the overlap really matters. With the window openings there is nothing behind it so the panels are not pulled flat and flush. They are allowed to kind of just sit out there like the potato chips they are. So from one side you see a big giant gap. You see a wide crack and it looks terrible. But just moving around to the other side, looking at it from a different direction, you don't see that as much. That is the whole point of me doing this side right to left. To not be able to see the inevitable mess ups, gaps, or differences and variations with the siding along this whole 32 foot wide span. The majority of people seeing the shop will be in a direction that they will see this shop and think it looks perfect. And that is the secret. To give a little information about the siding I'm using, this is an LP Smart Side product, and this is called Smart Panel. It is a primered, ready to hang OSB product that is tongue and groove, although it's really half lap joints on your long edges. That allows you to get a very seamless installation in the end and gives the appearance of eight inch wide board and batten or just a board siding. It's a very traditional look. Being OSB, these panels are very strong and they are very light. It's only about a 3 8 inch thick wall covering, so it's not super, super thick, but it is pretty strong enough for a workshop or building such as this. Here where we live, we don't generally have super strong winters. If we are fighting heat or cold more than the other, it is heat that we fight more. You're also going to notice that on the back side of these panels, the portion that faces the inside of the building, they are silver. They have a reflective coating already attached to the back side of the panels, which allow this siding to not transfer the heat as much from the outside and into my wall cavity. That radiant barrier may not do too much. It's kind of, you know, I don't know if it really does or doesn't. There's a lot of science behind it, but for the, I think of like $3 extra per piece to have it, I was definitely going to go for it because it definitely gets hot here where we live. Well guys, with the exception of the door, because I didn't want to take apart my ramp just to put the piece on, cut everything out, my siding is done. The entire building has been house wrapped, and as you can possibly tell by this echo, it feels more like an enclosed structure. Overall, the siding install went great. This kind of material I've used before for a couple of different building projects, and it is one that goes up very quickly. The biggest thing you have to worry about is making sure you keep your joints parallel and the bottoms or tops of your panels flush or level with each other. Other than that, you just wrap it around your building as you go, and in the end, you're left with a nice looking product that is pre-primered, is already is rather resistant, and ready for you to go ahead and paint and finish out. As far as how the space feels, sometimes when you enclose it like this, it either feels larger or smaller. And in some aspects, it feels smaller, but in most aspects, it feels larger in here. It is definitely easy to get a sense of the space, the layout, Okay, as far as the walls, right? My layout is not dead set just yet. But otherwise, I'm really able to see the space as it's taking shape. This is nice. While the house wrap was not required, it is something that kind of went back and forth on, should I do it, should I not? I bought it whenever I got all of my materials for this project. So I already had it on hand, and I figured, why not? Let's do it. Normally, you will see buildings sheathed in an OSB 7 16 inch thick sheathing. Then it will get house wrapped and then your final siding gets put on it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's perfect. It's the way homes are built. But I decided to do this a little bit differently. Since this is a workshop, it is a building of utilitarian usage. I just decided the house wrap, keep the moisture away, the bugs away, and then my panel siding, LP Smart Panel, once and done, install, we're good to go. It'll work great. I'm Not my current workshop, but the one before it, I used the same exact siding on, and it lasted great for these six years or so that I was there, and even to this day, still looks nice. 
As far as next steps, I can go ahead and cut out my window openings, and I'll probably do that. I'm also going to take apart my ramp over there, put the last piece of siding on that area, and then cut out my door opening. But after that, I'm done. I'm waiting on my roof trusses at this point. They have been ordered for three weeks now. The original lead time for construction was two weeks. This is the end of week three. Um, a couple of days will be in week four, so hopefully they do arrive soon because that is the next step. Raising my roof trusses, putting them in place, and then sheathing out my roof after that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you got any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. Also, if you've not seen the videos leading up to this, maybe you just plopped and dropped on this one for some reason, there's a link to a playlist down below that will show this entire build from start to finish. Otherwise, thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.